hello everyone. Uh, it's Neil here at the Music Centre. Still having a great time in Inspiration Week and delighted to have Patrick Bailey, one of my colleagues at the BSO, Associate Musician of the BSO, um, with me to have a chat now. Patrick, can you hear me? Can. Fantastic. How are you doing? I'm good, Neil. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm really well today, actually. Yeah, I've had a, had a good morning, a kind of more relaxed morning um yesterday uh, today and um how how is lockdown three treating you down uh, it, down in cornwall uh, it, it's fine in cornwall um uh, it's kind of similar to the other ones but there's a bit more rain okay <laughs> have you been managing to get out is that has that been your approach to kind of we we can kind of walk from here um i'm in truro uh which is a city but uh, we can walk around and, and see nice things and it's fine is it yeah it's fine okay and, and how have you managed to do much musicking, musicking over the last? I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? I was yeah, chatting I'm... to other people saying, you know, most a lot of musicians haven't done any gigs since, um, you know, March or maybe one yeah, was, live stream I was or something. Really fortunate in that myself and Matt Harrison, another one of our BSO colleagues, managed to set up a series of um, gigs at the Eden Project over Christmas. Um, and we were playing in a distance way in one of the biomes, one of the greenhouses there, um, on using a click track, uh, a Wi-Fi click track, essentially, to coordinate ourselves. And it was going brilliantly. And then we, the, really sadly for the Eden Project, they had to shut down, not because of COVID, um, nor even because of Brexit, but because of climate change, because of the amount of rain in Cornwall caused a landslide at the Eden Project and wow. made it quite unsafe. And so... We were we were in the middle of this run and had a genuine run of gigs. I almost done wow. twenty musicians at Christmas to have a, a run of gigs in the whole of the UK, and uh, and then it got unfortunately got sunk um, because of this landslip because of the quantity of rain we had um, over a period of days. So um, I have been gigging weirdly, unlike lots of musicians. I've also been doing a lot of arranging and composing as well. Okay. Uh, Tell me about a bit about the arranging composing. Like, is that something you've done for for a long time, or is that is that something that's always been there? Well, well I think composing, like you, I compose with other people. That's what workshop mm. leaders do. We are essentially kind of composers composing instantly with people in the room around us and using everyone's ideas to kind of create a piece of music. So, I use the term composer in its loosest sense because that's kind of. What <laughs> but um, as an arranger, yeah, I've done a lot of arranging. So. Uh, I arrange for, for full symphony orchestras, or I arrange for five, I, you know, I explode things from a small number of players for a large number of players, but also I do the other way around, and I take things which are, um, sometimes I take things like operas and make them available for sort of six players and two mm. singers. So mm. I kind of do both ways, really, and I kind of, I really enjoy the the, the moving around of notes, the kind of, the, it's both creative and an intellectual challenge arranging, but you don't have the pressure of saying, this is my tune this is my harmonies in my work it's it's and other composers have made the difficult decisions and you're just kind of moving their notes around like a game of chess which i kind of i really enjoy um, when 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 you're doing that do you how do you cope with either knowing or not knowing who it is you're arranging for like because because i mean you know if, if you can assume they're professional players that's yeah. that's one thing you can do whatever you like and whatever but um yeah how do you cope with that one well, if I, I normally know who I'm arranging for. Okay. So, um, arranging the Music of the Eden Project, I knew there was 11 people I know personally well in Cornwall who are forming a little Eden Orchestra. Um, and I know that they're very good players and I can really push them. If I'm obviously orchestrating for fantastic professional orchestra at the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra, then uh, I can do anything because I'll just play mm. anything. Um, mm. But then also I've been doing some arranging for um, Cornwall Youth Orchestra. We had a really lovely project where some local rock bands had written some pieces and we exploded them onto the orchestra. So there was both rock band and orchestra. And there I know that obviously players are less experienced um, mm -hmm. and there, so there are some limitations, but you, I can, I've, I've worked a lot with youth orchestras and with young musicians for a, a, a few years now, sadly. Um, and therefore I kind of have an approximate understanding of where players get to typically by a certain age. Right, so and, age. and more or less kind of get around that problem yeah okay I mean that's great I mean I've done you know we've done a, a fair chunk of work together we've done a lot of stuff with music for youth I was 
thrilled to be able to conduct your incredible arrangement yeah. at the Royal Albert Hall, yeah. which would have been a year and you know a year ago yeah. in November. Yeah. Um, and actually, the, the shirt I want, you know, it's not quite as nice as your shirt that you've got on there, but <laughs> I bought a special shirt for that gig, and I tried to put it on the other day, and I'm I'm sad to say that it doesn't quite fit anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that was that was incredible two days, you know. So thank you so much for your work and things. No, I I I saw the film of that and the recording of that, and I thought it was it sounded amazing. So well done, you really? for coordinating. Yeah. I mean, it's quite. Because you, and you, of course, you, that was your role the year before, um, and uh, it's quite an experience, isn't it, conducting that many people in that kind of place? It's it's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. You so, can't so, do much apart from start and stop it, really. No, no, there's no. That's, that, that's your job at that point. You're like the momentum, aren't you? You're you're yeah. kind of because because the rehearsal was so short. Yeah, you know, forty five minutes. To rehearse nearly a thousand people yeah. oh my yeah. gosh you just got to kind of push people forward now we haven't got yeah. time to figure out the fingering or the vibrato yeah. or the bowing yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that was so great because there was so much detail especially in the orchestral parts written in that there was no need for any of those discussions you'd like bulletproofed it um which was great um yeah so 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 this this sunday I'm delighted that you're coming to work with members of our concert band and, and other instrumentalists who, yeah, who, who may come along really looking so, forward so what's um yeah what's uh what 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 are you what what were your thoughts about that because you know i suggested it to you i was delighted that you said yes and um you know we've got players from the bournemouth symphony orchestra coming to do kind of follow-up ones and you know techniques master classes in the afternoon um yeah what, what are you hoping that um our instrumentalists get out of working with you and then the bso players in the afternoon on sunday i think in the morning we just we had a nice chat, didn't we? You and I and um, the two students who are really kind of running the the concert band and stuff. And yeah. we just um, we chatted a lot about just, just trying to create that sense of ensemble and community that that mm. ensembles have when they meet in the same room. And it's in, almost impossible to create online. There's so many limitations with playing live online. So it's, I just thought it'd be nice to just try and find a piece where everybody is doing almost what they will be doing in the room. And so the piece I chose is a piece by um, an American composer, Terry Riley, who's kind of like the godfather of minimalist music and therefore by proxy an enormous influence on so much music that's been written in the last 60 years, including uh, electronic dance music. So like, you know, your workshop yesterday with um, Keeper's Brew, for instance, that music they create, that's really influenced somewhere down the line by Terry Riley. So it, it's music that's kind of seeped into popular classical consciousness all over the world um, and it's a piece that's that's kind of constructed in, in a, a for the time a really unique way where everybody has exactly the same music on the page whether you're a, a tuba or a piccolo or a, a bagpipe or a, you know, an accordion you've all got the same exactly the same piece of music um, and you sort of choose your own pathway through it so you can be in separate rooms because you don't you're not doing exactly the same as the person next to you as it were does that make sense yeah so it does yeah what we've got in the background if you were in a space together would be a, a regular pulse playing in, in sort of quavers and everyone would play their part making their choices against that pulse well we can replicate that pulse with a metronome on our headphones and have the same process and enjoy the challenge of, of playing these different cells of music with with great, um, I suppose what the priorities will be to obviously play them accurately and to really think about all the kind of basics like, you know, fantastic articulation, impeccable intonation, great sense of life and energy, but also we've got to use our imaginations to, to kind of create that performance uh, atmosphere where you're giving that little bit more than just playing the dots, just playing the notes in front of you and you're able to kind of summon up um, a bit of that courage, I suppose, to kind of go a bit beyond that when you're recording your individual part. And then, of course, I'm going to do what lots of people have been doing during lockdowns is take everyone's recordings, stitch them together, um, not in a sophisticated way. We're not kind of going to make a kind of, you know, a, a superb kind of Deutsche gramophone quality recording, but it's just going to be something that's, that's that, that will sound fun and reflective of, of what we did as a group, as an ensemble, uh, that day. And I think in the afternoon, the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra players are going to just talk even more about basics of your instrument and how to become a great musician on your instrument. So obviously 
they may not talk about the specifics of any one instrument. It may not be talking about how you shade your oboe reed or how you oil your vowels and your trumpet perfectly, but they'll be talking about on this family of instruments, how do you make a brilliant quality of sound? How do you set yourself up physically and mentally to be as good a performer as possible? So anyone, whether they're someone who just enjoys playing their instrument once a week, or whether they take it more kind of seriously than that and, and, and play it every day, they're going to get something out of that session to help them be better. I think that's, I think that's a fair description, isn't it? I think. Yeah, and, and you've sold it way better than I than I than I could. So thank you for that, Patrick. That was um that's that's great. I'm I'm excited now. I'm I'm excited for it to, to see to see what happens. I'm really yeah, excited about doing Terry Riley because it's a piece that's been in my head since last March. It was a piece we should do or I should be able to do somewhere in lockdown. And I've done other things with ensembles and groups, um, but I've never done that piece. And so this, I'm really pleased that, um, that we're going to have a go at it, because I do think it's going to be a, a wonderful piece to have a go at. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And it's uh, what, one of the really lovely things about that piece is that you, the, there's kind of almost you choose your own complexity, don't you? You can, yeah. you know, there are some, some bits which are just a one kind of single note but the way you kind of get into it, you can, um, you know, you can really get into the uh, the phrasing of a single note, or uh, yeah. you know, or the gesture of just like two quavers or something yeah, like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Those two quavers become so important. Mm. And then because of the way it's written, you there's a point where you have to decide to move from those two quavers to where it becomes four quavers, and you sort of have to give yourself. Actors talk about what's my motivation, what, what am I looking at to, to motivate me to speak the next line or whatever. And it's kind of the same with that piece. You have to work out when do I move or, and how do I make that move come alive? So that there's a real purpose about moving from the two quavers to the four quavers. Mm. So it, it, yeah. it's, it's, it, it's a very deliberate thing that's in, integral to your performance, not just a question of like, I've played that 10 times, now I'll go on to the next one. Um, and so that's kind of something that can be, it'd be really interesting to talk about in the morning and discuss and, and demonstrate and, and listen and everything else. Just, you know, how do you, how do you make that journey musical and adventurous and um, exciting? Oh, yeah. Excited. I'm excited. This is going to be, this is great. This is great. So, um, look, Patrick, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that I don't want to take up too much of your time right. um, today. So it's nice to see you. Thank, yeah, you too. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, for joining uh, me today. And um, yeah, I look, look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Yep. Uh, ha have a good rest of your day. What, what are your plans for, for the rest of today? What's uh, happening? I am finishing off uh, some arrange another Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra project, actually. Um, every year we give a, a sort of a schools concert for Key Stage 4 uh, children. And um, that's had to be cancelled. So we're recording the concert this year to kind of broadcast mm. into schools. And I'm just finishing off a little bit of arranging and some scripting for that. That's my the okay. What what's the theme of the concert? Um, we look at the the sort of set works that people have to study for GCSE. Ah, so if anybody remembers back into their GCSE music, there's a kind of element where you have to study set works, and we we play some of those set works and anal and analyze and explore them. But also this year we've been taking some ideas from students and creating little pieces out of them based on the model of the set works, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, Someone sent me a little four bar tune and I've made a kind of fugue out of it in the way that Bach makes a fugue out of a different tune in his piece they have to study. So we're okay. sort of using model, the models to create new pieces. Nice. Yeah. That sounds great. And, and when is that happening? Is that that's going to well, be... we were due to be recording next week to start with. That's had to be postponed. So we're recording in February now and it will okay. go out to schools in March. Okay. Still, I mean, it's a nice, nice way because then at least they can kind of listen back. I mean, it's one of the great things about live, being live, 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 isn't it? Is that you're there, you're in the room and also it's kind of gone. So you have to pay attention mm. and, you know, virtually you don't get the same quite experience. You don't get the heightened engagement and the, you know, the direct experience, but you do get the ability to like rewind time. Absolutely. So that's a kind of a, a nice, yeah. yeah, a nice thing. As well. Weirdly, there, there are definitely advantages to doing it this way. Yeah. Okay. It's not the same. Uh, so there's one question I nearly forgot to ask you that I've been okay. trying to remember to ask is yeah. um, our students, there's quite a number of students who are interested in music. We've got music theatre, we've got music production, we've got other courses and who students who like doing music, primary education. Um, and a number of our students are interested in uh, sort of a piece of advice that you would give people who are 
considering um, taking music toward in a, in a career of some kind. It might be teaching, or it might be, you know, choir leading, or or maybe performing. Have you got Have you got anything that that has kind of helped you out along the way? Yeah, so it's just, I, I, I've always dread this question because I'm, I'm never. Mm. I'm, I think most of my career is built on sand and luck. So um, I yeah, <laughs> yeah, so mine too. Really, um, yeah, um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> I suppose what has helped me is is a willingness to. So if, if I look at what I do now professionally and all the different things I have to do and I enjoy doing to make a living and what I was uh, arranging and workshop leading and um, doing some sort of consultancy work here and there for education hubs and all those kind of things that feed into my career if you like or, or, or work I, I didn't train to do any of those I trained I did a music degree and I did then I did conducting for two years at the Royal College um, and that's a very very narrow thing um, and I don't really do much conducting anymore. I do bits and I'm, I'm very glad I studied it and I got a lot out of it and it taught me lots of things. But it was then just every time I went to work, I'd, I'd meet someone new or I'd end up doing something new and and running with that skill. So it's just kind of being prepared to be versatile, really, and prepared to learn new things. I mean, there's a whole world now that, that of technology that I didn't it even cross my mind when I was a student. So I struggle with that and I, I, I do my best with it but it's it's not natural to me but other skills i uh, have to adapt and, and and adopt and everything else so you and i know each other from being workshop leaders and stuff but that's not the only thing i studied no no yeah no, neither yeah 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 i agree yes yeah, that adapting your skills and being versatile yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. I and mean, being open and yeah. being open that you know you might learn something new yeah 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 that's true well patrick thanks so much for your time um Good luck with the rest of your arranging, and Thank we you. really look forward to seeing you on Sunday. See you Sunday, yeah, great. I hope to see as many people there as possible. Yeah, me too, me too. All right then, take care. Yeah. See you then. Bye. Bye.